Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you are all okay. Uh, do we have any problem about my voice? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, now, uh, today we are going to continue from some demonstrations of uh, IPC. Uh, if we have time, I'm going to uh, continue from where we where arrow left. So uh, the first thing is the signals. I would like to show you a couple of practical things. Uh, one is uh, child handling, uh, sick child handling. If you remember, we have one important issue in signal handling, which is uh, waiting for child so that they would not be uh, zombies. Uh, in a regular uh, parent loop here, we have five children uh, are uh, forked, created, uh, and this is the main process. In the usual case, uh, here somewhere, the parent has to wait. That means it will be blocked. Instead of blocking, what we can do is we can have uh, this waiting task to be handled by simply a signal handler. But we have a problem here, a couple of problems here. One important problem is uh, there might be multiple signals. So there are three children and they uh, exited exactly at the same time or very close times, okay? Uh, that means there will be three sick child generated. And as you know, the signals are queued and they will be delivered one at a time to the handler. Is that correct? No, because uh, queue, uh, the signal for a process is just a bit of information. So it doesn't uh, carry, even a count is not possible, okay? So it's, there are five signals. There are six signals waiting. Uh, since you don't have that, uh, so we have two states, either hold or sometimes this blocked, or it is just pending state. That means it is to be delivered. So since it is pending, you will get that information and all of the others. Uh, while one is pending, the second and third can be uh, setting hold bit but still you will lose that information. So uh, my solution to that, I don't claim, claim that it is the best solution. Have that code. This is a advanced version of wait, wait PID. It will have an extra flag. If you pro process zero, uh, if you provide zero, it is any process. And if you provide no hang, it will it is uh, not block. Okay, so it is a non-blocking version. That means this loop is like a polling loop, which doesn't block. It will uh, continue waiting for the children as long as there is no children left. At the end, it is going to return some value. Uh, zero, that means no children left to block or wait for. So I am going to leave the uh, handler. In that case, you will have uh, this. Since uh, we have this uh, blocking semantics, uh, that means while this is delivered, the other signals will be on uh, blocking st uh, state. That means when this handler returns, it will be unblocked again. So it, it, they are going to be delivered so that this will uh, work. And let me show you how it works. Not something too fancy. There are four children here and they randomly sleeping. If you like to make it more interesting, we make them uh, sleep for not random, but a fixed amount of time. So they are going to 
uh, terminates at the same time. Okay, so all of them terminated and gave their codes, and this code is waiting for parent to terminate. Okay, so it is just parent is sleeping four hours. So we have one, two, three, four, five children, and we get their exit value, all of them. So this is one uh, code. One uh, seek child delivered. Uh, actually, there are five of them, but since it is already uh, set, the, the others cannot further set a Boolean flag. So there will be only one handler uh, working. If you like, you can put something here, like handler is called, something like that. And so as you can see, handler is called three times. So three times for five processes. Uh, so this one waits for three children, and the other one, and the next one waits for their own ch child, okay? Uh, out of uh, this uh, syllabus, yeah, I have a comprehensive example of single handling. If the parent is not scheduled to run for a while, how will the kernel handle it? Isn't there only one signal waiting at a time? Uh, but if the parent is not scheduled to run for a while? Uh, it is not correct. This is not a heavy working system. So the parent is uh, most of the time working. So it is just handlers uh, being activated one after the other. It is something like that. So since they instantly uh, terminate, the handler is activated, terminates, call again, terminates, call again. It works like that. Uh, this is a comprehensive example. And in order to uh, make that happen, I used uh, this SIG action with a special uh, SIG action structure, and in that SIG action structure, providing this SIG info, uh, I get more information about the signal. So this is the uh, functionality that you can do. Uh, and I have a hard to read code here because each signal have uh, each signal has a different information. So if it is, for example, sick child, you can get the process ID of the child. If it is um, floating point ex exception, segmentation fault, etc., you can get the address causing it. If it is uh, what, if it is killed, there is a user uh, information here. Sorry, here. You can get the owner of the signal and process ID. So it is like you can find the murder, okay? A killer uh, in this uh, kill signal this way. Uh, and this has, uh, so in order to make that happen, I have this uh, reason strings converted, etc. And this is quite Linux specific uh, example. If in a Mac OS, for example, you will get. Uh, much uh, less information. Uh, and we have a couple of sources. Bana quiz var mı diye sormayın arkadaşlar. Ne olacak? Çıkacak mısınız yani? Okay. Um, uh, the uh, SIG action, the same handler here. Uh, is set for all of them. So all of them is going to get that, okay. Uh, <coughs> there are different sources, uh, control C, terminal signal, sick child, sick pipe, segmentation fault, floating point, all of them. So this is, for example, five seconds later, you will, there will be an alarm. And these are all uh, in the scenario. 
Uh, this is for waiting for a while. It doesn't make any other uh, sense. So let me just show that. So these are all of the signals occurring in the system and the information you get. Floating point happened here in this address. Uh, division by zero uh, segment. Uh, so this is division, division by zero. This is segmentation fault. Uh, this is a after forking a child. I have a sick child. This is the process ID and user ID. And this is the status of the child. This is the SIG alarm generated by kernel. And this is another child. And if you process control Z, C, for example, you will get uh, this as well. It is a common question uh, that uh, we have, uh, if we can recover segmentation faults and so on. Uh, yes, not recover, but you can handle them. And in this example, you can see how you can do that. The well, problem with division by zero segmentation fault and uh, such signals, uh, SIGBUS and SIGIL, uh, is that after returning from the handler, so for example, I am executing three over zero. I have my function handler, single handler working, and it says division by zero and so on. It returns exactly the same instruction. And it executes again, three over zero, executes and so on. You will see an infinite loop of uh, segmentation faults or infinite loop of uh, division by zeros. So you cannot uh, handle them or recover them in this trivial way, okay? But I had, uh, a trick here, I uh, jump to a different location. So when I get that uh, in the handlers, I set a uh, set jump point. And in the handlers, somewhere here, I have this long jumps jumping to start of the if that location and they recovering okay so please uh, look at this code and try to understand what's going on uh, as i said this is out of syllabus so you don't have to know any detail about this uh, the um, there are tools or libraries providing, for example, stack traces. If you have segmentation fault, they provide stack traces. And this is pretty much a mechanism behind that. Uh, okay, is there a time limit for handlers? Could a handler call main function? Yes, you can do it. It's like a native function call. No time limit or there is no uh, other uh, limitation. It's like a regular call. Uh, if you like, you can use a different stack for your signal handlers. We have that in this uh, SIG action. Uh, but other than that, if you use in the usual way, you can do that. It doesn't make sense to call main, of course, uh, but you can call other functions or the rest of your code, the rest of your process will go in the handler. It is also possible. But during the handler, by default, if you use not this one, the, the signal, uh, the signal will be in the blocking state so that it is not uh, to be uh, re revoked again. Other than that, okay, there is no problem. So now let us go with other uh, IPC functionalities. We have, uh, the next one is the shared memory. There are actually two mechanisms in uh, shared memory. You can uh, do either uh, MMAP or uh, shared MAP. It is 
POSIX OR system five release four based shared memory. So there are two things, two APIs that are say, uh, having you achieve pretty much the same thing. The difference is this is backed by a file. This is, this is backed by a kernel uh, buffer. This is handled through the uh, file system, file system and a file descriptor. This has an ID, uh, integer based ID. Uh, so we have this uh, distinction. Other than that, they pretty much provide similar functionalities. You won't need a file here. In this case, you will need a file if it is not parent-child relation. Uh, and the thing is, MMAP has another purpose. So uh, the shared memory is like a side effect or side benefit of uh, having a memory mapped IO. So basic uh, focus here is memory mapped IO. This one is pretty much designed for this purpose. And there are historical uh, reasons behind that. They, they uh, developed uh, independently in different branches of uh, Unix systems. So let me just give you examples of that. I have again two examples. Uh, one is, let me show you fancy example first. Uh, this is actually a text editor, okay? So. This is the uh, pretty uh, simple and stupid uh, version of VI-like editors. So if you open it again, you will see the file. So actually this is actually like any other file. So I can open in uh, VI also, but there is no uh, end of line implementation. So it's pretty much something like that. Uh, but the nice thing about this implementation is it is, on a shared memory. So so it is like a shared black board of application. Uh, what about the delay? Uh, delay comes from refresh. So this this is my editor's. Uh, my editor is refreshing itself with some period of time. Like I believe it is like a second or three seconds. Other than that, all of the operations are instant because they are occurring in memory. This file test.txt has a memory page in main memory, physical memory, and all processes are updating that memory instantly. And this is the key trick. That means everything is in the speed of light, not speed of light, but memory speed. That means uh, there is no delay. There is no kernel intervention. No one is calling a kernel function when updating that page. They are immediately update, updating the physical memory. And that's why this shared memory and the other uh, version is the fastest way of inter-process communication. The three uh, processes are communicating uh, without calling kernels instantly in the cost of updating main memory in the CPU level. Uh, the delay is coming from this refresh rates. If you like, I can play with that. So 
So there is this alarm with the refresh rate and uh, your alarm. Okay, we are leaving to roof. Now it will be much more instance. You see no delay because it is pulling uh, aggressively, like three microseconds, something like that. Okay. How this is possible? Actually, this is a very simple call, which is this one. It says that uh, this file, FD, already open. I give file descriptor. This is the offset. I said uh, any address is OK for me. So this is for providing that. This is the size of the buffer, so number of rows times columns area the protection read only read write and this is the key here if you don't specify this it will be mapped as private that means uh, all of the updates will uh, be uh, visible to this process only the other processes cannot see those changes uh, when they read the file they can observe the change occasionally but not through this uh, fast uh, access uh, then you can uh, close the file descriptor. This is the offset start of the file. Uh, so in this way, this area here, which was actually a, a character pointer, is accessible as, as a huge string, which is actually backed by the file. However, we have something uh, important here. Share a kind of as well. Um, couple of them. Okay. Um, I would like to show you this. So I had honor here and It is, it, uh, the thing is, maybe I cannot generate that, but uh, those changes are not uh, reflected on the file immediately because uh, on actually it is on disk, not on disk. Uh, that means if you read the disk, you will not see owner here because it is subject to this caching. If you remember, all of the I/O goes through memory, then written on disk, so. The, these changes are not uh, immediate on the uh, disk. However, in memory, they are. And this is a map. Then later, area is not just nothing but a string. And I just use that string. That's it. So it is as simple as this. Uh, but this is not the first time you are seeing a map on work. Because I have shown you in previous lectures those you remember a map, not a map, but the uh, memory map of a process? This is exactly a map. So nothing different here. All the difference here is uh, the mapping is read only. Okay, Different areas of this file is mapped into memory, read only with some offsets and so on. So a map is a very nice feature for loading a file as binary executable. I load the binary in memory. What should I do? I need to allocate a page, read the bytes into the page, then I can execute the page. However, instead of that, I have a map. I just map it in my memory so that I can execute it simply. 
without doing anything. And uh, this comes with an extra advantage. Those read-only pages are shared. That means if there are thousand processes you have that uses libc, blah, blah, so, that means you have all of them using same pages. There is only one instance of libc loaded in your kernel. So it is quite gain of memory for your system. Thousand processes do not have thousand libc. Thousand bash processes doesn't have thousand copies of bash. There is only one uh, loaded in physical memory and all of the others are sharing that. Uh, this is just a spoiler for our memory management chapter. In the memory management chapter, it will be much more uh, clear. So this is a map. And as I said, we have another way of achieving the same thing. Uh, yes, uh, shared memory uh, is made possible with virtual memory and memory management subsystem. Uh, of course, uh, your operating system doesn't have to support that, but it is a wise way of supporting it. Okay. All contemporary operating systems provide that, but if you have, for example, a small system, uh, embedded system, etc., you may have a uh, kernel lacking that. Uh, this is a fancy example again, but instead of uh, MMAP, I'm using this uh, SHM get uh, the uh, API, which is other way of achieving shared memory. Uh, in this one, we have keys and the processes use that key. Instead of a file path, they use this key, some integer value with some shared memory size and if it doesn't exist, it's crazy, etc. So this is my ID of that shared memory area, but still it is an ID like a 500. So I need to do one uh, operation this one, which will get that ID and return a pointer. This is like a void pointer, and you can convert that void pointer into some area. In this, this example, uh, maybe reading that will be uh, difficult for you, but the idea is this one. Uh, I have this shared memory area. Uh, the first part is for mattress A, second part is B and C. A is uh, like M by N matrix. Uh, the second is uh, n by r, and the third is n by r matrix. And you got the idea. My purpose is to make matrix multiplication. Okay. Since I cannot have this uh, linear uh, mapping, I have this is fixed as hundred, and I am using this portions of these areas as my matrices. Okay for different uh, M, uh, N, and R values. I'm using different portions of that. Uh, and the, the rest is handled by this uh, basic arithmetic, A plus M, B plus N. And I have this, this is my matrix pointer. The maximum dimension is 1,000 actually. A and B and C are pointers based on that. And they are using single uh, shared memory area is by is used by all of them, uh, and I read them from standard input A B, uh, and I multiply and print them. Okay. Yes, actually, it is the same thing. Same thing, but the uh, backing uh, up is different. So it's file backed per versus kernel buffer uh, map, but it's the idea. Physical memory, both are using physical memory. So rest you can uh, read on your own, but I'm going to give you an idea. I'm going to fork and proc number of different processes and each process is responsible for 
finding a, a couple of rows. So each process here calculates a different row in the uh, targets. So the idea is, for example, if this is my resulting matrix, uh, process one, process two, process three, they are working in interleaving mode, but they calculate a different parts. Since I have multiple processors, it will be uh, in parallel, okay? Ajahn, there's something I always found funny about, about uh, shared memory a bit. Now, especially when it's file backed, uh, I guess there are multiple issues, but one of them is, for example, you create a file, a shared memory file, you use it as shared memory, but on the same system, any other program could open the file and just erase your shared memory. Yeah, yeah. If, it's if, like no security uh, at all. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, if uh, file uh, ownership and the protections, etc., is uh, granted, yes. Uh, there is a trick for that if you are interested in. Uh, if there is a parent child uh, uh, hiding the map, uh, you can use parent child relation, you can use anonymous memory, anonymous mapping. It is called anonymous mapping. You can search for the keyword. It is more secure in that sense. But it has this uh, name pipe versus regular pipe restriction. There should be some parent child relation. Yes. Uh, the, um, So this is, let me check if it works. Shared memory ID. Okay, shared memory. Huh. Let us give some ID. It is going to create it anyway. This is one process case. And I'm going to measure the time. It is like some thousand by thousand matrix uh, multiplication. It is like, uh, 1 billion uh, multiplication, something like that. And this is the result, you can check it. It takes 12 seconds. If you provide like four processes, it will be like four seconds. If you provide uh, 12, this is the largest I can go, I believe. So it is three seconds, so after some, number it doesn't have but the idea here is uh, there are many processes uh, sharing uh, using this shared memory if you like we can put some sleep here so we can inspect that so map so I can show you one of them so there are six processes and this is how it looks like there is a memory area which is a shared memory area and this is the size read write and this is the important keyword here it is shared okay so in this way I can uh, make sure that the process is shared. All of them will have a similar picture, but this offset will be changing. This is There is no guarantee that they will be in the same address. But other than that, all of them will have this mapping. Let me also show you how this one looks like. Hey, Hojam, won't, won't they be the same since they are forked? And they don't start from zero? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, uh, if they are forked, yes, they are same. Uh, but in case they are not forked, this is a good point. Uh, they doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same. Okay. Uh, so this is how test txt looks like. The same thing, but instead of shared memory, it is listed as a file like this one, this one, and so on. And the difference is it is read, write, and shared. Okay. Uh, Okay, now let me go a little bit quicker. I'm going to show you message queue. This is actually an old example. I have uh, planes uh, landing and taking off from an airport. This is the scenario. 
I create a message queue. So this is the message queue. Uh, in the message queue, we have message boundaries. So this is one of the basic advantage over uh, pipes. Uh, and actually, I have two uh, processes. One is going to get uh, receive a message from the queue. So it is going to pop LMS out of the queue with the key and this is the largest structure you can get. Uh, but if it is, is it, if you specify a maximum amount, you will get uh, smaller uh, pieces. And this is trick, you can get one message at a time. So there will be no concatenations. There will be no uh, division of a message into two, et cetera. No supplies, no concatenation. Uh, and this is also illustrating the priority based retrieval. I am going to talk about that later. So, so this is my airport. And now there are airplanes taking off and landing in this airport. Okay. And the clients are doing nothing but sending messages. So this is uh, taking off or landing requests to the server, and server is handling them uh, one by one. So this is uh, such a application. Uh, but the thing is, if you have, for example, too many planes coming different areas of the world, the queue will get larger and larger. How can I show you that? So this is going to show me uh, the queue IPCS command line tool. Uh, Hojam, are you considering sharing the last years of fun lectures with those both years and so? Actually, yes, we are going to, actually they are open, they are public, you can uh, get it. But uh, we are not there yet. When we are there, you can, we will announce that. So as you can see, the number of messages getting larger and larger. That means some of the planes are wandering over the sky just to uh, land. So what I'm going to do, I need some priority. I need to give some priority to landing planes. Taking off planes can uh, wait in the land on land forever but the landing planes doesn't have any chance. So they either leave with their uh, last uh, piece of uh, gas or they uh, fall. So what I do is here, actually, if you are careful, you will see there are more uh, coming here in the service, which is a server. So this is server. As you can see in the server, now you are seeing coming planes because of an obvious reason. Coming planes have priority. And this is how I handle that. I give this in the receiving, you can give either a positive value, you pick a specific priority, or you specify a negative value. That means let me uh, take priority based retrieval. And uh, everything less than or equal to taking off is my interest. And if this absolute value is smaller, I am going to prefer that. So negative absolute value landing is less than absolute value of taking off. So my retrieval is going to pick the landing planes instead of taking off planes. Uh, so this is the idea. Ah, at last, the departing planes uh, can depart. All of the landing planes are over. Uh, shared memory, the uh, message could give you struck large clone Yes, you can. Uh, but the shared memory fastest. So why do we need the others? This is the question. Why? Because it is a large bulk of memory. Nothing else. So you, you need to organize that. Uh, database management systems sometimes do that. 
you need to get the, those data structures over that. But most importantly, we have one important issue over there. What about the integrity of that memory? Everyone can write and read. And there is no timing. There is no uh, integrity. There is no limitation. There is no boundary. Kernel does nothing for you. Give you some area of memory. You do what you like to do. That's it. So you need to take care of integrity. We are going to talk about that in the following chapters, concurrency, and all of the communication. For example, if you can implement this queue on a shared memory, exactly you can do that. However, who is going to inform you when there is a plane to land? There is no information passing. So this one is blocking for some information. And when there is a message, it is going to be informed. There is no such mechanism. That's why shared memory, although it is fastest, it is not always preferred. And the answer of your question is, of course, yes, you can use struct structures, arrays of structures and anything, as long as you know what you are doing. Okay, so this is the idea. Then one big problem <coughs> occurs if you try to put pointers in shared memory. Of course. Of course. <laughs> The point is, uh, just uh, because of the problem we just mentioned with Dennis, if they fork, we don't have any problem. But if they do not fork, they have different memory areas. And if you use pointer, pointer of one does not uh, be the same of a pointer of the other. So it is a big problem. So you need, so the, the, it is a limited uh, way of uh, communication. Powerful, but hard to deal with. <laughs> It's like Formula One car, so everyone cannot uh, uh, drive it, okay? So this is our, so I'm going to have one little quiz. So I just launched it. You have five minutes to answer. In the second question, you assume that there are multiple processes trying to read a pipe versus multiple processes trying to read a message queue. So I'll give you three minutes is sufficient, I believe, so that I can continue mentioning other things. So you have one and a half minutes. Do we select the message queues advantages? No, it is pipe, pipe advantage. So actually most of the cases, message queue will be uh, the better, uh, but there is one instance pipe is better. So. It is one of the, uh, the uh, choices. Okay, bir yanlış cevapla başa baş gidiyor. Doğru cevap ikinci soruda. Birinci soruda doğru cevap açık ara önde. You have 40 seconds. Oh. Tek doğru cevap olunca daha heyecanlı hocam. <gülüyor> Aynen öyle. Yalnız yani bu bayağı başa baş yanlış cevaplar var sınıfta. Demek bazı şeyleri anlamamışız. 
24'de 11 doğru cevap yanlış cevap. Doğru cevap biraz atak yaptı. Evet. Size 30'dan geri sayacağım, kapatacağım. 30, 29. Yirmi. On. Beş, dört, üç, iki, bir, sıfır. Evet. Gördüğünüz gibi we have... Uh, Winners are correct, but uh, we have second runners, first runners getting uh, quite uh, significant votes. Neither of them can broadcast. No, neither pipes nor uh, message queues can broadcast. Uh, messages can be targeted to a specific process. You can do that in message queues, but not in pipes. So it is not advantage of pipes. Uh, prioritization is also uh, in the pipe section, okay? Uh, okay, now, uh, I can continue with a couple of ideas from further IPC. So, So I believe you were here uh, in the last hour, so I can uh, progress a couple of slides. Uh, the sockets are actually um, implemented for networking. So it, it is not IPC on the same process, but it is something like IPC over networking so that the process in system A can communicate with process B, uh, in, uh, process in system B, okay? And uh, of course, when we're talking about networking, we're uh, talking about uh, the protocols. So we have different protocols implemented. Most uh, widely used is still INET, which is internet version four. We have six and go, uh, so on. And networking uh, course, you will learn about these OSI layers of networking, connection hardware, uh, routing, etc. blah, blah. Uh, and uh, that means we have heavy use of protocols, uh, the um, agreements, uh, uh, retransmissions, uh, validity checks, sessions, etc. So it is complicated. Uh, the Unix domain has something specific. It is the local uh, socket. That means it is used in uh, within the machine, the communication within the machine, and it is like a replacement of pipe in a more uh, functional uh, way. Uh, uh, Unix socket, well, in the local host, why do we need Unix socket? Because it doesn't have any networking. It, is, uh, it doesn't require IP or any other layer. So it is faster, basically. Even in the local host case, you go through this packet filters, uh, controls, etc., IP uh, routing layers, etc., and go back. If, what, uh, if you mean by local host 127.0.0.1 IP, it is still an IP and it goes over some layers of networking in the code. But Unix domain is much more simple and it just goes here, goes back uh, much more faster. Uh, the nice thing about that is if you write some sort of socket, socket code in Unix domain, converting that to internet version four or version six is not difficult. Uh, there are uh, two basic types, uh, a stream socket and data ground socket. Uh, the others are uh, not commonly used. The raw socket is only used for uh, inspecting the, uh, or configuring the networking layer like, what are my hardware, uh, what are hardware address of my network interface cards, uh, kind of queries are done in raw socket. And also this uh, sniffing of network, et cetera, carried out here. Uh, the um, stream socket is like establishing a session. And when you establish a session, bidirectional communication is possible. 
So in most of the uh, protocols, you know, like SSH, HTTP, FTP, et cetera, you are using stream sockets. So it provides like a pipe, like a name pipe, bidirectional transfer. But same problems hold. There is no message boundary. However, stream socket guarantees packet delivery so that you write and your write is successful means the other party received that packets, okay? Uh, and there is no duplication. There is no out of order delivery. So it is safe way of communication, but it is slower. That's why uh, they also introduce uh, datagram. In the datagram case, we have message boundaries. So you send uh, uh, varying size messages. However, there is no guarantee that the other party received the message and there is no session establishment. Uh, so it is like sending and forgetting about the message. Uh, they can be duplicated. Uh, message A can be can arrive later than a message uh, following it. Uh, and th there might be multiple message A delivered to the uh, receiver and so on. Sequential packet is some compromise in between. It is a uh, datagram send over a reliable uh, socket, stream socket. And row socket, as I said, is for configuring the uh, network. So I can have, I had some two slight progress, but we are out of time. Any question? So far. Okay. And thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Bye bye. Görüşmek üzere. Sağ olun.